Good morning, everybody. For our gathering music, we thought we'd do something a little special. For those of you don't, who don't come to Pickin' and Grinning, I wanted to show you a clip from Friday night. We've got a new star amongst us, and uh, we want to give you a sample of it here. This is a little uh, Brindley Michael. This is Allison Brinkley Michaels and Charles's daughter. She's three years old. Her name is Lindley. No, Brimley. Brimley, I'm sorry, Brimley. This is her this first time you sang, had not it? Yeah. That's a star in the making. Oh, yeah, boy. Okay. Good job, Brimley. So you started out two and a half pounds. Oh, that's right. Brimley's a miracle baby, too. She started out in this world at two and a half pounds. Can you believe that? Lord's got something planned for her. Okay, well, we were really proud of Brenda. That's the first time she's sung in, in front of anybody ever, I think. So she did a great job. Okay, Rocky. Have I got it now? Okay. Good morning, everybody. Could you find your seats, please? like to welcome everybody today. Doesn't the church look beautiful? Did they not do a great job of decorating? Let's give them a hand, the ones that came out and did that. And with the Advent candles back here and the, the little manger scene, it just makes you feel like Christmas is upon us. Um, any birthdays this week? Leroy Kiger, would you stand up, please? Because I know your birthday's today, my friend. <laughs> and is Pat Simmons in here? Hers was Friday. <laughs> Are there any other birthdays today or for the coming week? Where's Sheila at? Sheila? <laughs> Let's sing happy birthday to these folks. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you, happy birthday to you. Let's give them all a hand. If you got to come out Friday night to picking and grinning, it, it was a, a quite the scene, I mean, for the Friday after Thanksgiving, you know, we didn't have as many as we have at other times, but we did have 160 people who attended that night. Um, we raised $636 for the pastor's pantry, which you know that's dear to my heart. Uh, that'll, that'll buy food at 19 cents a pound at second harvest, so that really helps out. Thank you so much for that. And there was $395 for the picket and grinning fund uh, for the, from the hot dog sale. Next month's uh, mission focus is going to be on alpha pregnancy, and it's going to be on December the 29th. So everybody, please come out for that. This evening, we're going to be having the love feast, and that's going to be in the sanctuary at 6 p.m. Love for everyone to come out for that. I think you'll be blessed, and we'll try to have you some good coffee. Uh, Council on Ministries is going to meet tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. And you know, please provide Karen Tysinger with monthly events by Sunday so she can get them on the calendar. So if she needs those today. Our meeting is to discuss events um, for the first quarter of 2023. December the 4th is going to be our second Sunday of Advent, and we'll have the candle of faith will be lit. And this will be the cleanup crew. 
And then outside on uh, that evening, we'll be doing the tree lighting. So plan to come on Sunday evening, December the 4th at 6 p.m. as our church family lights the outdoor Christmas tree. A short program, Christmas Memories, celebrating God's love will be presented. Special music will be provided by the Youth Choir and Lisa Bates. Molly Long, Rita Snyder, and members of the youth group will share with us special Christmas memories written by Chrissy Wagner, Vivian Bates, Vida Stabler, and the Reverend Ted Craddock. Bring a lawn chair and warm blanket for this parking lot event. In the event of rain or snow, the program will be held inside. Light refreshments will be served after the program. A huge thank you to all you folks who came out on Monday evening for our yes vote to disaffiliate from the Methodist Church. We had an overflowing crowd. It was amazing to have the folks that we had, and there was like 98% that voted to, to uh, disaffiliate. Thank you all for coming out and give yourself a hand. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? Smiley, you got any announcement? <laughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us to your house today to worship you. Let us begin this season where we celebrate the birth of your son, Jesus Christ. He is the greatest gift this world has ever known. We thank you so much for Center Church and that we live in a nation where we are free to worship you. Please be with our leaders and give them the wisdom to lead us in your ways. Please be with the people who are sick and place your healing hands on them. Be with the families who have lost loved ones and give them comfort, especially during this Christmas season. We thank you so much for Pastor Wilson and let us receive your message from him today and use it to guide us through the coming week. We pray these things in your holy name, dear Lord. Amen. We welcome you all to Center Church and now for our special music.
Good morning. Let us stand and sing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, as we bring in the Advent season. If ever there was a year we needed Advent, this is the year. We hardly know how to describe the last two years we have lived through. We hesitate to reflect on all the mess around us. All we know is that nothing seems right and nothing seems like it used to be. We need Advent. With the hope that the birth of Jesus brings the world, the world can heal. The prophet Isaiah cried out for us, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down to make your name known, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. O Lord, and come down to us again. We long to be your people, a people of hope. We light this first candle as a sign of our hope. Hope that you can meet us, even in the chaos of the world. Hope that you still see us, though we feel we are sometimes lost in the rubble. Let this light be the guide that brings us to Emmanuel once more. O come, O come, Emmanuel. This time our children will come and thank God. We're going to something else. You children, come on down. Look at these little angels all. I love these kids, I clear I do. Mamas and daddies, thank y'all for bringing them today. Thank y'all so much. When you think of the holidays, what do you think of? Addie Okay then. This is the candy cane. Did you know that the white on the candy cane stands for how Jesus was pure and holy? He was without sin. In Hebrews 4.15 it says, 
For we do not have the highest priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been temp tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. And the red stripes on the candy cane. Then for the red is the red is the blood Jesus shed for each and every one of us. In Colossians 1.20, it says, And though him recline him to himself things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, but making peace through the blood shed on the cross. The candy cane is shaped like a shepherd's staff. The Bible calls Jesus our good shepherd who watches over us and cares for us. We are called the sheep of his pasture. In John 10, 11, it says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. If you turn a candy cane upside down, do you know what letter it makes? Yep. In one, in Matthew's 1, 21, it says, we, you will, She will give birth to a son, and you will give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And if you combine two candy cane, it makes a heart. Which is just a reminder that God and Jesus love you. Let us pray. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for this time we have together and everyone gathered here today. And the amazing story of the candy cane. May God bless everyone. Amen. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer and lift up needs that you have this morning. Uh, a couple we need to, to lift out is Miss Bonnie Von Stein's in the hospital. We need to pray for her. We need to, to pray for uh, Mike Leonard. He'll be having uh, some surgery tomorrow, uh, Tuesday. So let's pray for his, his recovery. Any needs you have by the uplifted hand this morning so we can pray for y'all. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you for this morning. Thank you, Father, for the rain that's fell to nourish our earth. Father, you know every need before we ever call on you, before we ever ask. You're always far greater than we can imagine. Lord, you have insight that we can't fathom. Father, how great is your love for us that you've lavished it on us time and time again. And even this morning, you lavish that love on us from those that have sung songs for us, that have taught our kids and even the children. We praise you, Lord, for them. Now, O oh God, open our mind and our understanding to that depth of your love for us. Help us, O oh Father, to have hope Renew hope where maybe that candle is flickering dimly. Relight that, O oh Father. Trim the wick that we might be filled with hope and be strengthened. And we thank you, O oh Lord, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, we'll continue our worship as we return to God, His tithe and our offerings. As our ushers come forward. We have a slight problem. There's four of you and we only have one plate. That's kind of like going to Thanksgiving dinner and everybody's sitting around they don't have any plates left for you. That's so sad. All right.
let it begin with me. Let there be peace. I can't hear it. Start over.
I tell you, I don't. I know a lot of people love to sing, and I've heard a lot of people sing. But I don't know anybody that loves to sing like that man loves to sing. Now that's an absolute fact, and he blesses me every time he gets up. Two passages I want to read to you. Well, I'm going to read more than two. One is from Proverbs. The other is from Luke chapter 1. So if you'd, if you'd find your place in it. Proverbs chapter five, uh, 12. One verse. Anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word cheers it up. You know, isn't that true? Anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word cheers it up. Now, dependent upon what you're feeding your heart will depend upon how much hope you have. Luke chapter 1, beginning with verse 5. In the time of Herod, king of Judah, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife, Elizabeth, was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. That's a key word, righteous. But they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive and they were both very old. Once when Zachariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, your prayer has been heard. That's worth underlining. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He'll be a joy and a delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you how good it is that we could gather together and to come in for a place from the stormy weather and to find sanctuary. Lord, we just praise you for the dear folks around us to the left and the right of us, behind us, in front of us. God, we thank you so much for the treasure of these people. We pray, Lord, in a very special fashion you would walk around in this place today. Breathe upon us and fill us with hope, O God. And we'll thank you and praise you. I ask your help as well as while I preach that you'd give me clarity of thought and preach beyond what I have to say. And God will praise you, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And you can be seated. We're so glad to have... Uh, brother Dean Slaybach back. Dean's been with us a couple of weeks, and I just wanted to mention that to you. He's back there in the back. He's the one st sitting in front of that ugly fella. 
I love Clifton. Clifton Linda's done so much work over at the parsonage, and I keep forgetting, and I want to say thank you to them. We're so grateful. Well, I want us to think for just a little bit about hope and our heart, how strong our heart is. That's very important, isn't it? I, I've known people who, who seem to be healthy, and the next thing you know, they, they dropped dead, didn't they? And come to find out they had a heart condition. I guess everybody's got a heart condition, don't they? They always say, what happened to you? Well, your heart quit beating. I guess that's a heart condition. But it, it's sad. There's a lot of folks walking around, and they don't even know how sick they really are. And maybe they could live a little longer if they took better care of themselves, went to a doctor every once in a while, but whatever. Our heart condition. What about our spiritual heart? What about our spiritual heart? Uh, Proverbs gives us that great wisdom, doesn't he? Anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word cheers it up. Do you have a lot of anxiety that's wearing down your heart, your spiritual heart today? It's just beating you down. Maybe you just feel like you've lost some hope. Just like I said in one of the prayers, uh, the candle is, is barely glowing. I was watching one of the kids where they're coming up with their, their, can, their, I don't know what you call that, candle lighter. As they're going up and the light was so dim. Now they could have adjusted that a little bit and probably got a little more, I don't know. But sometimes that's where our life is. It's just like, it's just, you, you just know. You just, you seem like you're hopeless. The reading is so true for two years. What a mess we've gone through, right? Well, the kind of stuff, and we could name it over and over. We don't need to today. But I want you to know that we can have hope in Jesus Christ. I want you to think about this man and woman, and I want you to think about how they had probably grown hopeless for a child. They had looked for, for a child for some time. In the Jewish thought, uh, they, they, they didn't center so much on the resurrection. Uh, it was about your children continuing your life on. You lived your life through your children. And a lot of truth to that, aren't they? I want you to think today, if you don't have a child, how you can invest in children around you and how that goes on. I think about the folks in my life, in my home church and so forth, and how they invested in me, and I think about what a difference it made in my life. I, one person stands tall. I've talked about him a whole lot. His name was Walter Early was his name. He was my scout leader. He was up in his late 60s. Early, late 70s when he quit being a scoutmaster. He was the greatest man I, I guess I ever known. He stood tall. He was a tall man. Six, probably six, eight or nine. Big, tall, lanky fella. He could out hike any of us boys. He, when you hiked, he carried around an old World War II sword of all things. And just a great man. But he never married. He didn't have children of his own. But I was thinking this morning of all the kids he probably has because of all those boys that he impacted. And he was a godly man. Took a lot of us to church from time to time with him. So he invested in us. He shared the Lord with us at different opportunities. He didn't preach to us, sit around. Every time you'd be afraid to sit down with Mr. Early because he'd going to go to preaching about the Lord. He, he wasn't that kind of man. He just, you'd be doing something and suddenly he's weaving the Lord into it. Just the kind of man he was. Hey, you never know how you can make a difference in other people's life. Paul, Zachariah, and Elizabeth. He served in a division that served in the temple. Now, that doesn't sound like such a big deal. There was 24 divisions. So, and you served for one week. So you think that out a minute, how often you would have the opportunity to serve in the temple. There was more priests than they needed, to be very honest with you. And only one person got the distinguished position of lighting the incense. And so there was, as I'm remembering, I think there was like 24 to a division. But I'm not sure about that. I can't remember that. So did he serve the whole week lighting the incense or did he just do one day? We're not sure. 
But here he is. He's carrying out his everyday task. And as Luke tells us specifically, to the right of the candle of incense, an angel of the Lord appears to him. And the angel says to him that you're going to have a child, basically. Now that had, that had probably long quit being a desire of their family because it you just doesn't happen when you get older, right? That just doesn't happen. And so that had to be good news and scary news. The Bible says that he was fearful. And you say, what would, he, what would a man of God be fearful about? I tell you what, the Lord physically stand in your presence today, and you know it. I think you'd be fearful. I think you'd be a sense of awe that the Lord would send an angel to speak to you. And so there he is. And the Lord tells him not to be afraid and tells him that he's going to have a special child. John will be his name. Now, names are real neat in the Bible. Uh, I don't know if people take the time. Back when we were going to have babies, we, we bought books with baby names in them. Did y'all ever do that? Any of y'all do that? Buy those books to see baby names in them? And they'll come out sometime the first of the year, and they're going to tell you all the, the popular names of the babies in 2022. They're going to tell you all that, so you'll know if you've done right, good, or what. Well, there are not a whole lot of Mitchells around. There are more now than there used to be. Well, when I was born, folks, I'm not bragging. Well, I, I can brag about this because I didn't have nothing to do with it. You see, I just came through the, and, and was here. That's the way it was. I, I didn't have nothing to do with that. There was a process that sent me here. My family was thrilled to death that I was coming to visit. My mama was the baby in her family. My daddy was the baby in his family. Hey, they having a baby. This is a big deal. Now, it would be a short time later that they found out who I was, and it wasn't a big deal. But they thought it was a big deal, and they're celebrating that thing. You know, you never know. You never know what somebody's going to be, do you? The Lord tells them what John's going to be. Tells them specifically. He's going to be a great prophet. He's also one that's going to bring healings to families. Children will bring their parents. They're going to come together. Verse 16 says that many throughout Israel, look at it, he will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. So that tells me that there's a lot of folks not walking in the ways of the Lord during this time. But when John the Baptist comes on the scene, he's going to reach a whole lot of people. Never know what you're going to do, do you? I wonder what sense of amazement that gave them. What kind of hope that rekindled in their life. I, went, I knew a fellow one time, it was around Christmas, and he, he, they lived in a little old trailer, modest trailer, he and his wife, trying to start their family. And they had one of these cardboard chimneys. You remember those things back in the day? And they had the little fire-looking thing in there. And we thought it was great, didn't they? I mean, and you're thinking, that would a bit more look like fire than nothing. But anyway, there they had it. Well, he said it. He, the man, the boy tells me this tale about his daddy. Says his daddy comes in, been cutting firewood, cold one morning. Daddy comes in, gets over there in front of that old chimney and he just stand there warming his hands rubbing his hands and he don't say nothing to his daddy directly his daddy and his daddy's serious his daddy says boy that thing throws out the fire don't it <laughs> <laughs> what a false hope what a false hope if he'd have stayed there longer he'd have froze to death wouldn't he a false hope this passage is not a false hope this whole Bible's not a false hope. This, this Jesus is so real. And you know, the older you get, the realer he gets. Isn't it? Isn't it wild how that works out? You finally start getting things worked out and you just die. Boy, that's morbid. But you go to be with him and find out the hope really is something extra greater than you could ever imagine. But, but the hope. And so this is who this Jesus is. He's going to be a person who offers so much hope. This is who this John the Baptist is. John the Baptist would go and preach. 
He was, the, he was a person who went into the city really before Jesus showed up. He got people ready. We'll be talking about him a lot next week. But he got people's hearts ready. It's like when a great evangelist comes. And you don't hear about it so much any, anymore. But like the, the Billy Grahams, when they would come to an area for months, they had a team that came in and, and they were the team that got everything ready. And, and uh, it, it, it was, they, were, they prepared the ground, if you will. You never know how God's using you to prepare the ground for somebody else. You never know how God's using you to be a special blessing. Like I told you, when I was a kid, that was a big thing I was born. I mean, that was a big deal. But you know, it's not all that way in some people. I've had people tell me. I've had some of you tell this stuff to me. I was a mistake. What? Yeah, mom and him said I was a mistake. I wasn't playing. Well, let me tell you something. Somebody was planning for you. You were very special to the Lord. And I want you to know that, that, that while there might not have been a lot of fanfare around you, God was doing some kind of work in you. There's a passage that, that I just think is kind of neat that Jesus talks about John the Baptist. And it's really startling about what he says about him, to tell you the truth. It, it's Luke 7, 14, I think, is the passage, 28, 7, 28. He says this, Among those born of woman, there's not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. Now, that's what Jesus says about his cousin. There's not any other prophet greater than John the Baptist. For he who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. For he who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. I tell you, you think you're insignificant? You think what you do doesn't matter? Because a lot of times you just think what you do doesn't matter. I mean, this morning, we're in a room that for just now, has been decorated greatly, hasn't it? I mean, isn't it great? Who all you, you dear ladies and some of you men help decorate? Raise your hands. Just one of you decorated? Two, three. <laughs> Be proud of yourself, Doug. You're the ugliest woman they got. So they gathered together and they decorated. Oh, well, that made a difference for us, didn't it? I tell you, when we, when we gathered together and we had our Big vote last week, Thursday. I, mean, I thought, oh, what a festive occasion that we could gather in that. And you know what was neat is, you couldn't see, but we're going to put it in, in a frame, but the, the joy in the room as we gathered together that night, I tell you, I've never heard so much chatter in my life. Chatter and joy, just, that was just wonderful to experience. You don't know the difference you make when you just take the time to speak to somebody. You don't know how that lifts them up to take the time and just really listen to them. We used to have a uh, secretary of the annual conference, and I tell you what, I really thought I didn't know Denny that well till I went before the district, the board of ordained ministry. But Denny would just sit and talk to you, and it didn't matter how many people was in the room; he would listen to you. You never know what taking time sows a seed in somebody's life and makes such a difference for them. It's like fine medicine. It builds their heart capacity. And when the heart capacity goes up, so does hope. And so you don't know who you're giving hope to. You don't know when you take the time to pick up the phone just to call somebody, just to call them. Because God placed them on your heart. And you just call them up. You know how that encourages somebody. You know how it feels to somebody just pat you on the arm and say, hey, thank you. Just hug your neck. and it, it fills you. It fills you. You never know what good you're doing. You don't know what you're going to birth in somebody else's life. There was no way for the parents of a man named Walter Early to know 
what a difference he would make in a young man's life like me and countless others. I'm told that there was doctors came out of that Boy Scout troop. There were other scout leaders. There was people who worked in industry. There was people who went to West Point. And was, I, know, I know we had a guy that would fly over occasionally. And Mr. Early would say, I bet that's so-and-so. He calls and tells me when he's going to buzz my house. He was in the Air Force. And it thrilled him to death. But he ne- his parents never knew. You never know. What a difference you're making. Because you're birthing something in somebody else's life. Think about that. When you take the time to pray, you're making a difference. What did the Lord say through the angel to Zechariah? Your prayers have been heard. You ever come to the place that you wonder, is your prayers being heard? Don't fear, Zechariah, verse 13. Your prayer's been heard. God hears your prayers. Now, am I telling you that everything that you pray for, you're going to get today? Is that, no, hear me loud and clear. No, no. But you never know how you're talking to the Heavenly Father and suddenly He begins to redirect your whole prayer life. And he gets you where you're not just asking for this list, but suddenly you're asking for something of the kingdom that you can't even imagine. And may not see it till you get into his presence. But you're making a difference for him. You think you don't matter, then you're the least in the kingdom of God. He said you will be the greatest in the kingdom of God. I hope that gives you some hope. Because you really do matter to some folks. Keep making the difference for Him. And walk with Jesus. Because He's with you. Amen. Let's pray together. Well, Father, we praise You for being with us. We thank you, Lord, that somebody sowed seeds in our life. And right now, Lord, brothers and sisters, let's just stop. I want you to think about people who sowed seeds in your life. Thank the Lord for them. Now, Lord, direct us that we might sow seed in somebody else's life. That we, perhaps like a John the Baptist, could turn hearts back toward you. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and let's sing. As Wesley wrote in the front, there in the front of the hymnal, he gives instruction for singing. Let's sing heartily to the Lord this morning as we sing out.
Well, we thank you so much for coming this morning. How many of you were with us Thursday night when we had our vote? Raise your hand so I can see who you are. Was it Monday night? Wow, I must have had a vote Thursday night. <laughs> when you just love to vote. Our policy up in the mountains is vote early, vote often. So that's just the way we do. I told them, I, we got a minute, I got to tell this old tale. We're standing in line to, to vote years ago. I think it was a presidential election or something. We're standing over, I said, you know, they don't even give you nothing down here for voting. And people's listening to me. I said, back home, they'd give you a bottle of liquor. <laughs> and this woman said, what? I said, yeah. Well, I, and I did it the same thing over here. And the people just looked at me. I said, oh, yeah, but it was always the sheriff's races. Yeah. They'd come around. <laughs> I, that's a serious. I'm serious as a heart attack. And I'm, I don't believe that would have ever happened in Davidson County. But it did. <laughs> but back home. But anyway, thank you all for coming. Now, for those of you who hadn't heard all this, and we're not going to beat this down, but we, we, had, we had our vote. Uh, we had 194 uh, voted to leave the United Methodist Church. Four voted against leaving. One didn't vote. 97%, almost rounds off to about 98% voted to leave. So the next step for us is we have to go to annual conference and be voted at annual conference to leave along with a whole lot of other churches. So that's what we're doing. And but we we we've got the money now to pay that. But if we pull all that, we're having to pay two hundred fifteen thousand dollars roughly. If we pull all that money out, that would really hurt us. So we need all of us to pray about because voting was easy. Now we've got to pay up. We've got to we've got to pay to leave out. So that's what we're doing. And so if you'd like to help us, we'd love for you to. If you don't want to, that's that's okay too. But thank you so much for coming today. Pray for your church. And we'll see you tonight at the Love Feast at 6 o'clock. Now may the grace of God and the peace and fellowship of His Holy Spirit go with each one of you. Fill you with hope as you go forth to spread that hope in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the people of God said, Amen. Thank you all.